In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We offer this Mass for the eternal rest of Rita Almeida. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sins before the presence of the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray, on the devo devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it, Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, <clears throat> covered himself with sackcloth and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and Call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their action how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil he had threatened to do them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> a, hard <clears throat> a heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and from my sin cleanse me. <clears throat> a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. <clears throat> For 
for you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. <clears throat> Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me <coughs> with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of heaven's glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the queen of the south will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today Jesus is talking about a sign. And he is the sign. He represents an invitation to conversion. When Jesus preaches, He's saying to us, repent and believe in the gospel. That's what we hear when we receive the ashes on Ash Wednesday. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the sign that Jesus represents conversion. He's not inviting us uh, to conversion only, but he's kind of commanding us to repent. Because it is good for you, it is good for us, it is good for our people to know the Lord and to change their ways, their ways of life. What was the response of the people of Nineveh uh, in the face of the, the message that Jonah was proclaiming? Let's see the, the content of the, of the message. He was threatening the people. You know, it was, a, it was a message based on fear. If you do not repent, the Lord will destroy Nineveh. And, you know, when you, when you are aware that you're going to be destroyed for not repenting, you do something. You try to prevent it. The response of the people was to proclaim a fast and to put on a sackcloth. What is the content of Jesus' message? Almost the same thing. Almost the same thing. He's saying, the queen of the south will rise with the men of this generation and she will condemn them. He's talking about condemnation. The same thing uh, he says about the people, the men of Nineveh. They will rise with this generation and condemn it. There is a, 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 a part of the content of this message is 
condemnation is possible. But there is a plus. There is a plus. With Jesus Christ, there is always a plus. What is the extra sign? Or is the extra sign? His passion, his death, and resurrection. By looking at Jesus, by looking at how he suffered for us, for you, to give us salvation, to open for us the gates of heaven, by looking at this, we must repent. In the face of such love, which you, which you say, Lord, forgive me, I, I give you thanks. Forgive me and thank you. Forgive me because if I don't repent, I might be condemned. But the plus is thank you. Thank you. I want to love you. I don't want to do what is right out of fear. I want to do it out of gratitude. I want to do it out of love. I want to love you back. So, one of the things that called uh, my attention in this gospel is that the Queen of the South was looking for truth. The truth. This generation, our generation, doesn't look for the truth. They, they don't care about the truth. What they care is about what they can do. What I am allowed to do. If I can give access to whatever my instincts want, this is what, this is my concern. Okay, this is the mentality of our generation. In Jesus' time, uh, it, it was normal to seek truth. Philosophers and, and even the pagans, they were all interested in truth, in finding the truth. They were aware that, that truth existed. And, and they knew that by knowing the truth, they were going to be set free. What we see in our generation is that our people are not interested in looking for the truth. And this, is, and this is a bad sign. Why? Because the truth, the truth demands, demands change. When you know the truth and you are and you know yourself, and you know what you were doing wrong, and that you need to change for your own good, and for the, the good of your people, your family, then that implies a change. That implies sacrifice. That implies conversion. Conversion. So conversion comes, um, let's say, from two sources here. The proclamation of the truth. Without the truth, Pos uh, conversion is not possible, and showing Christ's greatest sign, his passion, his death, and resurrection. You know, if, if we don't convert by, by being aware of this, there is nothing to do. So let us, let us have Two attitudes, two attitudes. The first one, well, I must repent. I must do penance. And then, thank you, Lord. I don't deserve it. And thank you for telling me the truth because even though I don't like to know the darkness in my life, by knowing it, I can change. I can become a better person. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much and help me to love you back out of gratitude for you. Let us pray in silence.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Church, for the world, and for one another. For our leaders in the Church, that they may fearlessly proclaim the need to reform, no matter how enormously large the task seems to be, let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the world, that like the King of Nineveh and the Queen of the South, they may respond to the message of the prophets of our time who cry out in God's name for justice, life, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have wandered far from Christ and his church, that he may create a clean heart in them and renew in them a steadfast spirit, let us pray to the Lord that Jesus may, may raise his sign of hope and healing over the sick, the poor, the imprisoned, the addicted, and all who are in need of our prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, that they may be purified of every trace of sin and brought rejoicings before the God of all the saints, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, Hear our prayers and grant what we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have, give, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the saints and angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the viewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we remember to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is good for us to know the truth, even though we have to know more ourselves and to discover the dark side we have and that we don't like. It is good for us because that enables us to change and to have a better life. It is good for us because by knowing the truth, by knowing God, by knowing his love, we're transformed. And this is a beautiful gift to know his love for us, to be aware that, that he gave us so much. Let us give thanks to him and let us ask him the grace to love him back out of gratitude, knowing that, yes, there is condemnation. Yes, I have to do penance. Yes, I have to do whatever I have to do for me to change of life, for my own good, for my own salvation. But above all, I should do everything seeking love, seeking love in God. Let us say the prayer Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, may peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us unending life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads or kneel. Watch over your people, Lord, and in your kindness cleanse them from all sins. For if evil has no dominion over them, no trial can do them harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.